Nitrogen is weird in that, well, this family is NS2, NC3 for its electronic configuration. Nitrogen is interesting because it can have multiple oxidation states. It can form a lot of different compounds with a lot of different oxidation states. And the funny thing about it is that nitrogen can be extremely stable like nitrogen in the air. That's extremely stable. Or it can be extremely reactive. So some nitrogen compounds are extremely reactive. Many bombs are made with nitrogen, and I'll give you a couple examples. Uh, so the extremely stable, I gave you an example of N2. It's basically inert N2 gas. Uh, it can be used to dilute a diluent. So if our atmosphere was all oxygen, you would be walking around and things would be catching on fire around you through spontaneous combustion. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been to a place like a logging place and you've, uh, maybe you've seen this before, sometimes they shred or grind up the logs into sawdust. Well, you can't just leave the sawdust out normally. You have to have to be watering the sawdust all the time. Otherwise, it will spontaneous, spontaneously combust in the heat, just because of the oxygen in the air and the heat. So you have to keep that watering. You can actually calculate mathematically why that's true. Um, OK, so uh, that's a stable. Let's do some of the reactive ones. Reactive. Uh, you might have heard some like nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin. It looks like this. There's obviously a lot of nitrogens on it. Three. And three NO3 groups. Those are called nitro groups. NO3. So uh, nitroglycerin. The glycerin is the... Uh, here at these, each vertice, there's a carbon, so there's three carbons involved in this. Uh, this compound looks as follows. If I write out the molecular formula, and it reacts as follows, and I want to write out this reaction so you can see it. N2, CO2, H2O, and O2. Uh, you can, why don't you try to balance this? I'll give you a second to do that. Uh, and I'll say something about it. Yeah. Oh, this right here. What the heck is that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some people, while you're balancing this, I'll, I'll answer this for you. Uh, some people make nines like, uh, like that. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know how to do that. Just do it in one swoop. There's your nine. So that's how I draw nines. I used to work for Nordstrom's though, and they don't let you draw nines like that. You have to draw this crazy way here. Um, and so nobody could read what I was doing. Okay. So uh, if you balance this, you should have got a four. Well, I'll write it down. If you're still working on it, you can look up when you finish. Okay. Now the interesting thing about this you got nitroglycerin in the products, uh, in the reactants, in the products, those you have N2, CO2, H2O, and O2, all of which are extremely stable. <coughs> this is common with all bombs or explosives where the, react, the products are always very stable. And so the energy difference between extremely reactive and extremely stable is so big, that's where the energy comes from. Uh, some other reactive molecules, uh, TNT, which stands, you don't have to know what it stands for, you'll learn it in OCHEM, but it's trinitrotoluene. This is the toluene, and it has uh, nitro groups. These nitro groups are NO2 instead of NO3. That's trinitrotoluene. I want to write this reaction as well so you can see it. When this explodes, uh, it follows this reaction. See, 
So I'll try not to follow you in a C uh, seven H five N three O six that reacts to form C O H two N two some carbon uh, and uh, you can try to balance that as well. But again, notice everything in the products is very stable. And so there's a big difference between the stability of the reactants and products. Same sort of pattern. So these are extremely exothermic, extremely exothermic, very stable products, a very fast reaction. And uh, oh, one more thing. Uh, I didn't point out before, one more characteristic to know. The products are all gases. And that's another thing uh, about explosives. You go from usually a liquid or a solid, a very small volume reactant, to gases as products which are extremely big volumes. So that's explosion. Imagine going from small to big. Um, and so that expansion uh, is literally explosive. Okay, so nitrogen seems so mean, so evil, but uh, nitrogen is also in living systems. Living systems. Uh, you've heard maybe of this thing called DNA. Uh, the nitrogen fixation pro process, uh, proteins, all, they're all over the place. It's all over the place in your body and biomolecules, etc. cetera. Uh, industrially, <coughs> Does anybody know what is the most important, uh, should I say, compound industrially for fertilizers? Ammonia. Ammonia is extremely significant for fertilizers, NH3. It puts nitrogen in the ground. Uh, some crops use up the nitrogen, so you need to put it back in the ground. Uh, it's also, it's all over the place. That was fertilizer. Uh, rocket. Propellant, uh, N2H4, that's a liquid. When you add, when you react with O2, it forms N2 and 2, uh, I'll put H2O, 2H2O. Uh, uh, this is called hydrazine. This hydrazine, notice, this is a liquid. It's small, tiny, small volume, goes to gases, very stable. Uh, they're high volume, uh, same sort of thing as the explosive. In fact, rocket fuels or fuels in general are by nature explosive to, to get you to propel, whether it's gasoline or whatever. Uh, one more interesting one, uh, nitrogen oxide, N2O. This has two applications. My favorite, laughing gas, this is put you under whenever uh, I go into surgery or something, I ask for as many drugs as possible because that's the only circumstance it's legal. And so laughing gas, the other application is into, uh, what should I call it, kind of aerosol cans to propel whatever it is out. So you put this in the uh, can and as you push the button it propels it outwards. So like whipping cream for example, push the little button it comes out. Okay, let's talk a little bit about phosphorus. right below nitrogen in the family. The most common oxidation states for phosphorus are plus three and plus five. Uh, elemental phosphorus is P4. The most common oxidized form of phosphorus is P2O5. What's the charge on phosphorus for P2O5? Plus five. How about P4? What charge? Zero. Yeah. Zero. Okay. You see this also um, biologically. ATP, adenosine triphosphate, and ADP. The phosphate, that's phosphorus. So it's all over the place in biomolecules as well. Uh, also used in fertilizer. So phosphorus is also used in fertilizer. 